Hey guys, James here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to repair rising damp in footings. Now basically, on this project, you'll see here where we've stripped out part of the wall. What you'll see in the video is the wall being injected, and then I'll put it all back together, but basically talk a little bit about what's happened and you know how to, how to go about fixing it. All right, so getting right into it. First thing you can see here, we've already stripped it out. So you'll see by some of the photos that I showed before, what it was like originally where some of that moisture was coming through on the plasterboard and then stripping this off. What I generally like to do is come along and depending on how high the moisture has actually come up the wall, we can check this with the moisture meter to see how damp it is down below and then as it works its way up. But I, I generally, if it doesn't come up too high, I'd like to measure up the width of a plasterboard sheet which is 1200 on both sides, chop that out there so we can make all our repairs below and then when it comes time to fixing it, we can just use one sheet to go back on to cover up that repair. That said, if the moisture's creep right at the wall, then we'd have to probably pull all the gibrock off. So the process is to drill out the base of this bottom course of bricks. Then they inject it, and then what that does, it spreads like a silicon um, waterproof membrane through the bricks. And because the bricks are, are porous, it basically just spreads through. Once it dries, then that forms a vapor barrier at the bottom or a, 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 like another layer of damp course and then the water can't penetrate up past that because at the moment with the old brickwork it's just sucking it up from the base of the footings and then just leaching up through the render into some of the plasterboard. Now uh, because we're covering this back up with plasterboard which is sheeted over the brick wall I can just get away with chipping off this old render putting some new battens on and then refixing it over that. If you had a property where the walls were the rendered finish and you wanted to put render back over it, then what they generally do is they apply a salt retardant in the render and they might strip that render off, you know, same sort of thing, maybe 1200 up, a meter up, depending on how high the moisture's actually gone. And then they can apply that back over the face of it. But we're lucky here, like I said, we've got plasterboard finish on both walls. This back wall's a solid wall, so we're able to inject that from the backside. We didn't have to actually strip any of this plasterboard off. Unfortunately, this wall here being um, a brick cavity, if we had have injected from the outside, the product wouldn't have leached through to this inside skin. Hence why uh, we've basically had to strip all this off. All right, so I'll take you out the back, show the injections being done, and uh, talk a little bit more about how it finishes up. Okay, so I just finished chipping off the, the rest of that wet render that was there, bring it up to about where this joint in the gyprock is, and it's not so damp there. It's actually back to being quite normal. So next stage now is just to sort of dress this up, and then I'm gonna take these treated pine timber battens and fix these to the wall with a ugh, membrane behind it. So just in case there is any damp left in the wall, it doesn't transfer through to the battens and then through the new plasterboard. So tidy it up now. Start putting it all back together.
doing some of this work, it's a bit of a process of elimination sometimes. You can see behind me here, there's a planter box. Now this ran all the way up to the wall there. When we first started, we thought there could have been a damaged membrane up against that wall, and some of the water seepage from the irrigation in the planter box could have been seeping through into there. But after digging it out, having a bit of a look, all the uh, irrigation was in check, and the waterproofing for the membrane was actually okay as well. So, now that we've injected inside and done the repair there, I can cover that back up and put the planter box back into place. And uh, we know that that's not the problem on the outside. Like I said, that waterproofing's in pretty good condition. Okay, so a couple of the other things that we've done outside here is put on this extension for the air conditioning overflow. What happens is when you get condensation from the wall, this pipe was finished up here, and the water would just drip down at the base of that wall. So by diverting that into the gutter here, it just takes that water away from the base of the wall just to help stop it being so damp as well. Then the next stage, we've got some sand and cement. We're gonna come along and fill up all the little injection holes on the outside here. And that should be the outside finished up. So there you go guys, got to see that repair take place. You saw all where the damage was down the base here, stripping that off, the injections taking place, and right across that back wall on the outside we injected, and then put the chemical product in, filled it, put it all back together. One thing I will stress when you do this type of repair is really speak to a damp specialist, guys that really know what they're doing, that specialize in doing the injections. There's a couple of different methods that you can use. This is just one of them. This is one that I've used over the years and it's always served me quite well. So you continue to use it again. Um, the other thing is when you're putting the plasterboard back on, make sure you use either a waterproofing membrane or something behind your batten so that if there's any water that's still left in the wall when it's drying out, it doesn't transfer back into the, transfer back into the sheet. So just a couple of little tips. All right, all I've got left to do now is really sand that up, put our skirting board back on, paint it, and the repair's done. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that little repair video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, like or subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Cheers, guys. Happy repairs.